To begin with, let's just talk about the general interface for iPhoto. The first time you launch iPhoto, you get this Welcome to iPhoto screen, which is basically a way to try and get you to look at the, the help that comes with the software. You can browse the help or go through some tutorials here. Given that you're taking this tutorial with me, you really don't need any of this. You can just close this and go right to the main screen. And what you see in the main screen is this main area here shows you all of your events uh, when we're looking at the library based on events. Uh, and in each event, you can see as I roll my mouse over, it skims through all the different pictures in the event. So you can very quickly get a sense of what you've got in that event. You can, uh, you can see the number of events here. Right now, I've got them four across. If I zoom in on the window here, they'll go to three across and then finally two across and take full advantage of your screen. So you have really nice, big view of your pictures. So it's really easy to see what you're looking at while you're working, right? even in this browsing view. Um, you can also view things as uh, organized by the individual photos. You still see them broken up into the events, but here you can twiddle down and go through the individual photos. So rather than having them condensed into those uh, events, you can view all the photos individually this way, uh, again, categorized in these little folders. If you click on faces, we're going to come back and talk about how to have the software automatically recognize faces. Right now you see it says there are 253 unnamed faces in my library and we'll go through and we'll have it uh, find more faces that we can identify and tell it who's who and it'll identify them for us. Some pictures better than others. Uh, we'll go to the places here and here you can see a map and this is powered by Google. It's a regular Google map and you can zoom in on the map and uh, as you zoom in it'll identify the different places where the pictures are. Uh, see if, if we go even further, you can turn on the satellite view here. So instead of viewing it just as the terrain, we can see the actual satellite view and zoom in further and uh, identify where these photos were taken and, uh, and so forth. You also can access uh, a series of recent uh, albums. You can create your own new albums to store things, or you can look at things like pictures that you've imported in the last 12 months uh, or uh, items that have been flagged, and we'll talk more about flagging later where you might identify a picture so that you can come back to it later for a certain reason. Uh, here's a recent album because I was just looking at that album a few moments ago, and so forth. So all these controls are a way to categorize what you're looking at at any given time. This main window area in the center shows the details of what you're looking at based on the sidebar in the left. There's another pane if you click the info button here, and this info button will show you detailed information about uh, the album, if you're looking at an album, and here we can add a description to our album. Trip to Europe with DV in 2005. And then that'll stay with that. If I ever search later for Europe or DV or 2005, I'll be able to find that. We haven't yet gone in and identified the faces, but eventually we can. We can add keywords. And again, we'll come back to dealing with all these things later. Identify the various locations that are currently being viewed. Here it's got a few of them already identified and so forth. That's looking the info window for a particular album. If I go ahead and open this album up and we look at an individual photo, now we see more information. It tells me what camera it was used, it tells me the, the format that it's been saved in, uh, that we used an auto white balance, it, it, the metering mode, everything that was stored with the photo is automatically imported into iPhoto, which is really handy for a variety of reasons. Uh, you can also identify uh, how much you like a photo. I can add stars to give it my rating, uh, and you can identify whether you want to give this photo you know, one star or three stars or so forth. Again, you can add a description for an individual photo, uh, identify the face, and so forth. All this information for a specific photo, uh, that's because we're now looking at the info window for that individual photo. And again, we're going to come back to all these pieces in a little bit more detail as we get deeper into the program here. Uh, you can go into the edit window here where you can rotate, enhance, fix a red eye, straighten, crop, retouch, or there's a whole lot of other more elaborate things that we can do to finesse our pictures here in that edit window and so forth. So a very, very robust and powerful program basically using these three panes. The On the left is the sidebar in the middle is your main stack area and on the right if you expose the window is the info area where you can see more details about any individual picture.